would like to welcome everyone to the March 2nd meeting of the New Market Town Council, and we will start, as always, with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So just a note um, that the town manager is on vacation, and so we have our um, Andy Toppin uh, sitting in uh, for the town manager this evening. Um, sorry, I will speak up so that people can hear me. Um, the first item on our agenda is for public forum. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak this evening? No. Then I will... I will close the public forum at 7.02. Um, the next item that we have, we have two public hearings this evening. Um, and I just will pull up my information. Um, so we have two public hearings, and um, they are for the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG. Funds are available to municipalities through the New Hampshire Community Development Finance Authority. Up to $500,000 annually is available for economic development projects. $500,000, up to $500,000 for housing projects, up to $500,000 for public facility projects, up to $500,000 in emergency funds, up to $25,000 per planning study grant, up to a million dollars available for each housing project under the CDBG CV allocation due to COVID-19. Up to $500,000 was available for CDBG COVID services. All projects must directly benefit a majority of low and moderate income persons. Um, so now I would like to um, open the public hearing on the progress of the CDBG COVID project. And I'm just gonna read one more item, um, and that's the CDBG COVID project provides funding to the municipality and service provider sub-applicants for costs in preparing for, responding to, or recovering from COVID-19. Participating organizations include Newmarket General Assistance, Newmarket Housing Authority, Newmarket Recreation Sunrise Sunset Activity Center, Newmarket Recreation Department Child Care, and Newmarket Community Church. To date, $150,471 of the $325,060 CDBG CV grant has been spent primarily on staffing, a van, emergency assistance, supplies, scholarships, and administration. Currently, the projects have until June 22nd to incur costs. Um, so is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on the progress of the CDBG COVID project? Seeing none, I will close the public comment at a public hearing at 7.04. The next item, um, I would open a public hearing on the progress of Newmarket's Housing Authority's Improvement Project. Uh, and again, the project, the progress of the Newmarket Housing Authority's Upgrade Project, which is on 34 Gordon Avenue, includes replacement piping, some kitchen upgrades, and energy savings improvements. The majority of the 50 residential units are occupied by low and moderate income According to the current schedule, the contractor will have completed the new piping in the building by April 2022. The kitchen upgrades in some units, along with energy improvement items, are expected to be complete in summer 2022. And is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on um, the New Market Housing Authority's improvement project? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing at 7.05. And that concludes.
concludes our public hearings. Um, with that, uh, I, I had um, messaged the council earlier. I do have a personal matter that I need to attend to. Um, and so I've asked um, uh, Councillor Conley to, well, I asked the council to, <laughs> to um, for someone to lead the rest of the meeting and Councillor Conley has graciously offered to lead the rest of the meeting. And so with that, I um, apologize and say good evening. I'll second. Excellent. Is there any discussion or corrections? Okay. We'll call the roll. Council Brayden? Aye. Council Piper? Aye. Council Blackstone? Aye. Council Ward? Aye. Council Conley? Aye. And do we have a motion to approve the regular uh, February 16, 2022 meeting minutes? So moved. Do we have a second? Additions and discussion and corrections? Okay, we will call the roll. Council Braven? Aye. Council Piper? Aye. Council Blackstone? Aye. Council Ward? Aye. Council Conley? Aye. The motion passes by unanimous. Okay, and the next item on our agenda is the report of the town manager. So if there it is. All right. Um, COVID 19 and vaccination update. As of February 24th, there. Um, were seven active cases in the community, a decrease of 84% since the last report. We've had um, 1,622, 17% uh, of the population, cumulative cases. Um, our health region, which is the Seacoast and Rockland County, have both had, um, have substantial levels of community transmission. Seacoast Health Region has seen a 5.6% increase in new cases over the past week, but this is down 6% from the previous report. Uh, the New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services has changed their recommendations regarding masks. As the Omicron surge declines, population immunity increases, effective therapeutics are increasingly available, and there is decreasing risk from COVID-19. Uh, the New Hampshire Division of Public Health Services is no longer recommending universal face mask use, but rather recommends that decisions on face mask use be based on individual choice and informed by a person's own assessment and acceptance of COVID-19 risk um, rather than universal requirements. Face masks remain an effective prevention measure. Uh, therefore, people who are severely immunocompromised or who desire additional protection for themselves or another household member can choose to wear a face mask for their protection when in outdoor public location, uh, indoor public location, excuse me. Um, face masks continue to be required under federal rate regulations in certain situations, including on public transportation, um, which includes school buses. And when entering a healthcare facility, Additionally, face masks should still be worn to shorten isolation and quarantine to five days. And you can see the isolation quarantine guidance. Um, as for vaccinations, we had a slight increase in the percentage vaccinated. And there's a table, which I believe you have in, the, in your version of the report. Um, moving on, town election is Tuesday, March 8th. We need at least one counselor at the polls at all times. Um, Steve sent out a sign-up sheet, and the town clerk will continue to make sure it's being it's filled out. Yeah, um, I got clearance for so any time that's not currently being filled, I can be there. Oh, great! Well, thanks. Um, and then the next thing is I'm going to hand this over to the Department of Environmental Services Director Sean Gregg, who is going to um, 
discuss the wastewater energy audit. So to give you a little bit of background, uh, the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services is working with uh, New Hampshire Water and Wastewater Facility to look at energy, and look at ways that we are operating the most efficiently. Um, so I have to give a great thank you to New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services and Eversource because they provided the funding for this. They hired um, Dean Poles from Process Energy Services to do the work. As part the work is complete, and as a part of the agreement, we're required to do this presentation tonight. So tonight I have Steve Bowles from Process Energy and I have uh, Sharon Nall from the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. I have a brief presentation that reviews the, uh, the evaluation done at the uh, water and wastewater facilities. And uh, it was a pleasure working with Sean and his staff and uh, they do a great job at both, uh, both systems. Over the years that we've done these evaluations, we've found quite a few savings at a lot of uh, municipalities, a lot of treatment plants uh, in New Hampshire. And uh, it's a reflection on uh, how well the facility was run that I haven't found as many savings as I typically find. So uh, it's uh, nice to see that. Let's see if I can get this. Nope, just click the circle. Sorry. Yep, that'll take you where you want to go. <laughs> Thank you. So the energy audits uh, were uh, put together with uh, these sections. Um, both the water and wastewater sections or, or reports had uh, executive summary, um, a, a uh, section on energy management, which talked about benchmarking. Uh, the water and wastewater systems with other <laughs> and then a review of the system uh, pump stations. So for the wastewater side, it was the collection pump stations. Then, of course, on the water side, it was the wells and the booster pump station. Uh, the water summary report included uh, a section on the uh, energy saving measures, section four. And in the wastewater report, we had uh, two sections, um, review of the wastewater plant systems and then the energy measures as well. So the categories that uh, we typically use for uh, uh, projects found or the recommendations include energy management measures, which uh, often uh, is just for tracking energy use, benchmarking um, your energy use with some sort of process value. In the cases of uh, for the water system, it's flow. In the wastewater system, it's either flow or pounds of BOD processed in the, in the treatment plant. And then the operational measures are fast payback measures. They typically pay for themselves in less than one year. Uh, energy con conservation measures have uh, longer paybacks than one year. That's the traditional type of energy conservation measure. Now these projects and the evaluations were focused on efficiency, <coughs> primarily on the process side. Uh, a few HVAC measures, but it doesn't cover renewable energy, so uh, solar uh, projects or uh, any other renewable type project. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with the water system. This is just a few photos of uh, the facility, the water system, the booster station, water tower, and uh, the three wells that are uh, that were in service, or at least uh, been in service during the evaluation. Sorry about that. Just an appearance here. So existing staff uh, energy saving initiatives, um, Sean and his staff has already made progress uh, doing several projects. One was um, reducing system water loss since 2006, which is now less than 5%, which is really remarkable. Um, the uh, DES has a goal of uh, under 15%, and uh, consistently over the years, Sean shared some information with me that showed the reduction over the years. And in fact, the latest value, I believe, is about 3%. Um, water loss, which is amazing. Uh, that's really probably one of the best that we've seen. So, uh, some of the information that was provided uh, shows the incumbent savings tracked over a four year period about $28,000, which is excellent. Why is that? Um, just last year, the town replaced 3,300 feet of six inch pipe that was uh, creating a system bottleneck 
and that lower pro pressure that was uh, uh, relieved after that project reduced pump energy costs by about three thousand dollars and currently the staff is working to operate uh, the wells efficiently what i do is during these evaluations i do testing at various speeds so variable frequency drive and adjust the speed of the flow uh, the, the pump flow and um, Yeah, that helps. And so each one of the wells were being operated efficiently already. So that was nice to see. And when we do these evaluations, we start with a baseline. So for the, uh, the equipment in the water side, um, we start with annual energy use and, and uh, annual electric costs as well. We use 2020 as the baseline year for this project. And then any savings calculated uh, uses this baseline to determine that. So this is just a summary of that. And we do some benchmarking as well. I know these are difficult to read, but uh, really what I wanted to show here was just that uh, you can see in the, the center there, New Market is about uh, right in the middle of other facilities, water systems we've looked at in New Hampshire. And that includes surface water systems, which is a little bit of an unfair comparison. But uh, certainly of the well systems, uh, New Market's doing very well. So this is just looking at kilowatt hours per million gallons. It's a very basic benchmark value, but it's nice to kind of see how you compare with other water systems. And it's also a starting point. So as their projects are completed, you can track that progress and uh, you can see there's a new benchmark value after completing the measures, which is slightly less than uh, the existing one. And uh, it's nice to see that progress as projects are done over the years. Now these are the summary of the water system measures. Again, a little bit small to read, but uh, I'll go over each one of these. Uh, you can see the, the three categories are up there, the energy management practices, the operational measures, and the energy conservation measures. Uh, the total of the, uh, the proposed projects uh, should reduce system energy use by about $8,000, and uh, that's 16% of the 2020 electric. I'll go through each one of the, the projects proposed. OM1 is adjusting, and Sean can jump in here as well to talk about some of these projects because I know he's done some research on them. Um, OM number one was uh, adjusting the sewer well impeller. Uh, it was already fairly efficient, but this is just uh, a little, an adjustment that can be made for this type of well pump. It has a hollow shaft motor, and uh, if uh, that clearance can be improved or reduced rather, and the efficiency would be improved and some savings could be uh, realized from that. OM2 is investigating the uh, propane vaporizer at the Macintosh well. Uh, uses a little bit of energy, not a big project. Um, typically for generators, uh, I think it's 60 kW for that. Uh, for that I'm poor, that guy. <laughs> a little bit off. <laughs> so uh, this, as Sharon and I have looked at a lot of different uh, pump stations and generators over the years, we've we rarely seen uh, vaporizers, but um, it was just flagged as something that uh, could be looked into to see if there's some savings and, and uh, potentially be able to eliminate that. Sean did a great amount of research on it, talked to several engineers about it, and found out you do need the vaporizer. So although I kind of flagged it as something that might be an opportunity, um, Sean was able to <laughs> quickly find out that uh, that, that wasn't the case um, by researching that. It actually um, heats it up. Oh, so it's an actual heater. Yes. It's not just like you're seeing a liquid oxygen tank or something. No. So what actually happens is when it's warm out, you can create more vapor. But when it gets colder out, you can't create as much vapor. So it's able to, and it, it's kind of funny because my research on it, you would think it's when the tank is empty, but it's not. It's when the tank's full is the problem because when the tank's half full, you have more surface area to create more vapor. So if, let's just say it's 10 to minus 10 out and the tank's full, we need it to produce enough gas to, to uh, power that generator. Yeah, you just bleed a little propane off and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to waste any money there. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's why it is. Yeah. We all learned something on that one, so <laughs> appreciate that. Yeah. Sean. A 
couple of other measures. Uh, OM3 was just uh, installing a wall thermostat for uh, the, the booster station. It's only a few hundred dollars in savings, but I was uh, getting everything I could um, while we're out there to uh, hopefully find a few projects. And then ECM1 was actually a well pump replacement. The efficiency of the, the Bennett well pump was fairly low in the 60% range, where the actual uh, original curve value was closer to 80%. So you can see there was a pretty significant difference there. Um, worth looking at more detail to, uh, to improve that uh, pump system, and uh, hopefully that'll be uh, looked at shortly. To speak to the Bennett and Sewell well pieces, those are two of the projects that are coming up as part of the rural development piece, so that's why none of that stuff has been done. So when we do the improvements to those two stations, that work is supposed to happen. Thanks. And then the last one is installing heat pumps. Um, instead of the electric heaters at uh, a couple of the pump stations. I was able to quantify enough of the, uh, the energy use for the electric heat to help um, support this project. And that's always a challenge, is not just guessing at you know, what you could save, but actually trying to quantify it. So separating the pump energy use and the miscellaneous energy use, in this case, electric heat, uh, we were able to uh, uh, put some numbers to it to uh, develop those projects. And did that price include the drilling wells and everything? No, not not a uh, uh, not a ground coupled heat pump, but rather uh, an air source type heat oh, pump. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like a like a, a mini split. Yeah, or exactly. So, any questions on the water system? I was hoping to find more, but uh, it's it's they're good projects, and Sean's already working towards uh, improving and the heat pumps the are also part of the Bennett Sewell upgrades as well. So those are all included into that. Good. Nice to see projects <laughs> happen so quickly as uh, after the evaluation, which has always been a challenge for us as we've gone to a lot of municipalities. Uh, wastewater collection system pump stations and treatment plant. I don't have a lot on the pump stations. They're fairly small. Um, we had hoped that uh, there'd be enough savings to support projects because the pump stations definitely need to be upgraded, but the energy just wasn't high enough to really help support projects, and that's what this is all about is, you know, finding projects that are cost effective. So unfortunately, I didn't find much. The, you know, the heating systems were operated at, at minimal levels, and the pumping uh, systems also had um, low operating hours, so it was uh, it was challenging to find anything for the uh, collection system pump stations. This is the baseline we started with for, uh, again, 220 energy cost. Um, you can see the wastewater plant, about $94,000 a year. Creighton Street pump station, pretty significant, $30,000 a year. It's a large pump station, the main station for the plant. And then you can see how, how it compares with the, the other pump stations, uh, Two three thousand dollars per year for uh, annual energy costs for those small stations. Now the Creighton pump station. Here's a just a summary of the twelve months uh, of energy use. And what I did is again break down the energy use between the pumps and uh, the electric heating systems and other miscellaneous energy use. And uh, it's pretty significant amount of energy use for the heating systems. And that's because of a lot of ventilation that goes through. Um, the pump station and the headworks, and uh, because there's raw wastewater flow, it needs to be ventilated, and uh, that's really one of the reasons for that. So I focused on that to try to tighten up a little bit on temperatures and, and ventilation, and that's the first two measures here. OM number one is electric heat adjustments. It was already being operated at a very low temperature, 50, 55 degrees, but this is just trying to squeeze a few more kilowatt hours um, knocking it down to 45 degrees and uh, reducing it even more. With that high ventilation, you know, the lowest energy or a thermostat setting you can put it at will, will help reduce energy use. Of course, you don't want to freeze the piping, but that's, that's the balance. And then OM2 is reducing the ventilation uh, during certain times of uh, when the uh, area is not being occupied. So what I proposed is to cycle the ventilation on and off with a timer, and uh, that's still um, as long as class one division one equipment is in the area, then you can do that without causing a problem. So again, more savings um, for uh, optimizing that system. Just, just out of curiosity, if, if you have a pump that size, would insulation be an option instead of heating? I mean, does it, does it does the pump generate enough heat that if you, if you did a serious insulation, 
unfortunately, no. It's, it's just not enough. Right. Yeah. Well, in, in this case, and I've always wanted to give more, uh, you know, do more measures of insulation, but when you have a high ventilation rate yeah. going through the building, the insulation kind of, yeah. you know, is a secondary improvement and instead, you know, uh, optimizing the thermostat setting and the ventilation rate is the first priority. But I agree with you that eventually that might be something to be to look at um, if the heating costs are still high after making these adjustments. So this is just a, an overview of the wastewater plant to start with. Um, just shows the major structures and the process systems. Um, I don't need to probably get into this in detail. It was really just kind of looking at the big picture and then the evaluation of course looked at all the process equipment, um, looked at the uh, building systems um, and uh, put all that equipment together to figure out where all the energy use was going in the facility. Now this is the energy balance. This is reviewing all the equipment, finding out where all that energy is going to the wastewater plant. Of course, we've got a lot more going on there. So it's basically dissecting everything. And you can see the aeration, the selector zone, is almost over 50% of the energy use in that system. Now normally that's a great opportunity for savings where we can fine tune the, the um, operation of the equipment, possibly also in, uh, uh, recommend more efficient equipment. But the town has invested a lot of money in that plant and uh, upgrading that plant. And uh, I don't know how old the aeration system equipment is, a few years old. 2017. 2017, so it's all uh, efficient equipment, fine bubble diffusers, uh, new efficient blowers, uh, DO controls, it's all there. This is what we usually uh, present in these type of reports. But uh, because all that equipment is in place and Sean's running it very tightly as far as keeping that levels at a low level, the DO controls, um, there really wasn't a lot of savings in that part of it. So uh, unfortunately, uh, for the sake of showing savings, uh, we didn't find much for that. But uh, it's nice to see and discuss how well that's being operated at this, at this time. And again, a little benchmarking with the wastewater system. Um, a little un bit unfair comparison here. We talked about this earlier, Sean and I. And Sharon, how uh, because Sean is running an advanced treatment system, um, comparing it with other plants that don't have that treatment capability is a little unfair because there's more equipment and more energy use, but still still fared well uh, about the middle of the pack here for other facilities, um, wastewater treatment facilities. And again, looking at the benchmark value before and after, um, it's something that can be done on a regular basis to, uh, to constantly look at efficiency and how well the plant's doing. So here's a summary of the measures. Uh, because I had a hard time finding measures, I actually had to resort to showing off what uh, Sean and the staff have done. So I have a couple of measures that already had been pursued, um, but it was worthwhile putting it in because it affected the baseline energy use and that needed to be included. And it's nice to quantify it too because a lot of times staff, uh, they do improvement projects at the plant, but they don't know really how much they save. And so hopefully that was worthwhile as well to be recognized for the savings that they accomplished. So the, the projects, including the staff initiatives um, shown in the report, uh, looks like about 8% potential savings, about $12,000 a year. And I'll go through each one of those. So OM3 is something uh, that's been ongoing um, for Sean and the staff operating the primary clarifiers. I know this is a back and forth type of thing and it may change, but it's nice to at least quantify it to see what, what you save. Um, and that's what it looked like for savings for the about 18,000 kilowatt hours a year, which is $2,500 a year. Uh, it had already been in place and per being pursued and that might change, but at least it's not a significant amount. There's a balancing act I know with having the primaries online and, and other issues at the plant too. The next one was OM4, was cycling the uh, uh, waste activated sludge blower. And uh, that's a staff initiative as well. Something I usually uh, look to, to uh, optimize uh, this type of system at a plant, but it had already been done by staff, which is great. Another 12,000 kilowatt hour savings, about $1,600 a year. 
6.15 was uh, reducing uh, maintenance building thermostats, uh, basically just a, a simple adjustment. Again, high ventilation rates uh, makes it challenging to, to do this, but uh, this is just a simple measure. Uh, and then ECM number one is the uh, anoxic zone mixer VFDs. What I did is I looked at, at this uh, cubic footage of these mixers and uh, how they were operating to see if the horsepower per thousand cubic foot um, capacity of the uh, the areas that they were mixing if it could be adjusted and it looked like the, the zone a mixers were slightly oversized uh, so if a vfd again used to reduce the capacity of equipment can be applied here uh, there would be some good savings because they operate all the time so that's something to be researched i know sean was going to check with the engineer on that to see if that's was uh, a good measure or not So just summarizing, uh, the new market water and wastewater systems are operating very efficiently based on the benchmarking value and uh, certainly the, the detailed review of the process systems and, and pumping systems. Uh, it's nice to see that staff's already taken the initiatives and they're interested in saving energy and operating efficiently, which is really nice to see um, compared to some municipalities that aren't engaged as much. And uh, the proposed energy saving measures hopefully will help optimize equipment operation and reduce energy costs and uh, improve those benchmarking values. Any questions? Yeah, yes. I, I have a question on wastewater treatment. Um, sometimes you can optimize a system for a specific function and get a lot of savings, but uh, the wastewater treatment system is one that's constantly changing. I mean, we're, we're getting new regulations all the time and you know, we're trying to get more and more nitrogen out of the system and stuff. So the system needs some flexibility so that it can, you know, go with the changes. Right? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you look at that at all? Like, um, you know, that, that we don't try to optimize so much that, um, you know, we lose flexibility, I guess. I, I don't know the specifics of it, but I, I've worked on other systems like that where yeah. sometimes like really larger pumps are a good thing because you know, to be able to handle new regulations. That's a good example, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, but I think the way we do it is we try and optimize best we can when we're looking at other things. So, for example, some of these things are going to take a while for me to try because I can't change. We're making changes, and I can't make too many changes at once. Right. Because if, some, if I make too many changes at once and then all of a sudden something happens, I don't know which change did it. Right. And... The other issues are um, different years, the, the weather's different, which really affects our plant. So it, it's not as easy as just going out and, and making some of these changes at the wastewater plant. Um, and there's also other things that we're trying to do to see what happens and see how we can most effectively run the plant. But the only way that I found to find whether stuff works is to push the envelope can always dial it back but until you start to push it and see what happens you're not going to learn it I used to work for a Japanese company and on the production line they would just go in and pick somebody randomly and say you have the day off just because they wanted to see what happens if you don't have enough people to do it I'm not telling my guys <laughs> <laughs> I don't have enough <laughs> I mean, it's, the same, it's the same philosophy yeah. You know? yeah. no Stress the system and see where it yeah. fails, and then you can fix, you know, strengthen that part. And we stress it. We really yeah. push the envelope on that part. Yeah. But I was just saying, sometimes having slightly bigger motors, I think, is a good thing. Um, you know, because it's going to be warmer over time. I don't know how global warming is going to affect this stuff, but um, you know, I, I think sometimes you can over optimize energy. Energy is only one piece of the puzzle. That's right. Energy's, we're looking at a lot of projects that energy is only one piece of why we're looking at it and making the change. There's labor, there's operations, there's maintenance, there's a bunch Chemistry. of Chemistry, I mean, it seems to be changing a lot. All Reliability, the yeah. all these things mm -hmm. we're looking at. So there'll be projects that I'm gonna bring forward that are just not, you're not gonna see the end total lot of energy savings, but you're gonna see a lot of other benefits. So this is only one piece of the puzzle. Right. Sharon has a few uh, words to say about um, finance. Yeah, I, I bring the checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> 
um, and that Sean kind of said that really well as far as he does push the system and we like that's why he's doing so well with efficiency he knows the limits of what he can do and we've got other operators like nope this is the way I do it this is the way it's been done for 30 years that's what I'm going to do so thank you <laughs> uh, we have so just to update you guys applied for a drinking water energy grant which will be awarded. Um, that's a 50% grant for, I believe you're implementing everything is mm -hmm. what you applied for. Um, there will be a letter coming out soon. That's going to be, so the other 50%, there'll be a commitment letter that has to come from the town. Part of that commitment for the 50% can come from New Hampshire Saves, which I can give you the contact. It's Russ Hunt, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've met him. Um, New Hampshire Saves will, uh, Eversource will give a, a commitment for their part of that 50% that you guys are uh, required to pay. Um, so that they'll explain that in the email that's going to come out soon. Um, I just reviewed it right before I came here. Uh, on the wastewater side, we have 100% um, grant funding. Um, we, with ARPA and all the funding that we've got, we had to work with all the pre-applications that were submitted last June. Those are the ones that are moving forward right now with 100% financing from us. Um, I am, I plan on spending, on getting, new, doing another solicitation, so I'll be contacting all the facilities that have had audits, so that would be up to you. <laughs> yeah. There's not a whole lot on the wastewater side, unfortunately, but um, to give you an idea, it's like you had, I think, 12000 of cost uh, so far in the audits that Steve's done for wastewater. He's identified $9 million of energy projects. Um, so Sean's doing a great job. You guys are doing a great job supporting him. So um, the other thing I will say is we have planning grants. We will be doing a solicitation for more pre-applications in for due June 1st. The pre-application process, it is not a commitment. You're not, you're just getting on the list. And if you get on the list, then you are eligible for whatever programs we come up with. And we can't, we don't know what we can come up with until we see what we've got. That's a little, little tough with the ARPA money because if it's not spent this year, we may be opening it back up and doing more grants. So that will help you. And so asset management, um, planning, energy, those are all potentially grants. We'll take it, get your projects in. <laughs> and then if, they, if it's not a grant, you don't have to move forward with it. Or you don't have to move forward with a grant either, but, but there's no commitment. So any questions? a good time to do projects. We have lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your checkbook. Thanks so much. Just to report that um, the budget committee couldn't didn't have a quorum, so we weren't able to meet. Um, the Riverfront Advisory Committee met on Monday, and the design team for the um, uh, Living Shoreline, <laughs> what's that word? Um, came and presented. They are still finalizing, so we'll get a final. Um, of that 50% design um, in about a month. Um, but the presentation was really exciting. It was so fun to see, um, you know, more in more detail than we've ever seen before, the, the different pieces. It still, I will say, looks pretty similar to the design I sent out to everyone, but I will, and I apologize for not doing it before today, but I'll send out the um, presentation that they gave us. I'll send that to all of you. Um, uh, Amy Higande from um, Parks and Rec was there and asked some really great kind of 
user questions. I think so much of what we've talked about with it has been focused on the environmental component. Um, so it was important to have you know someone there kind of speaking to the Arts in the Park series and all the other things that Shanda Park is used for and making sure those considerations are um, you know also being factored in. Um, anyway, so that was exciting. I'll share that. Um, I also, while we're on committee reports, I do have a committee question, um, which is just that I will be out of town next week during Conservation Commission's meeting on Thursday at 7. Um, I know uh, ways back we as a council um, opted to not have alternate representatives for a lot of the different committees and commissions just to save folks time. So I don't know if that's something that we want to send someone in my place or just ask for the minutes to, to be able to share with the council. So I wanted to just put that out there, but I will not be able to attend. I'm not sure that we can send somebody. Okay. I think we discussed this and they have to be already appointed by the council. Okay. But I think we discussed having alternates for, we asked Steve and he said that we weren't allowed to do it. Right, either there's an alternate or yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then I will, um, if no one has an objection to that, then I will send, um, I will, track down those minutes after the fact and make sure that I, I am able to report back to folks. I may also be able to get a hold of them. <laughs> really? <laughs> that would be wonderful. I can also report that the um, Arts and Tourism Committee also did not have a quorum and so did not meet last week. <coughs> Any other committee reports? Well, then I will report that the Planning Commission also did not have a Quorum, it did not meet. <laughs> oh my goodness. Rough one for me. It was a bad week. Okay, well then we'll move on to um, old business. Um, this evening we have two resolutions or ordinances in the second reading. Um, we've got the 2021-2022-24 um, Tucker Will Project Award and the 2021-2022-25 Tucker Will Dredge and Fiddle Project. So we'll start with um, resolution 2021-2022-24, the Tucker Will Project Award. Um, do we have a do we have a motion to approve this resolution? I will move to approve resolution 2021-2022-2024 Tucker Well Project Award. Do we have a second? Oh, I think maybe Sean, do you talk about first? I think first <coughs> we have we'll to say that we're going to bring okay, it in. Okay, okay, sorry. Then we'll, yeah. uh, the, the second. And now he, you can come up. Now, do we have any <laughs> <Sorry>. discussion? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, the uh, Tuckerwell project is to increase the town's water supply. Um, it's a 275 gallon a minute well, which will put about another 400,000 of capacity into our system. This project is part of the water projects that were voted on a few years ago. Uh, we have completed the Moody Point um, water main project, the Southern, South Main project, and the Bay Road project. This year, we're looking to do the Tucker Well as well with the Sewell Well and the New Road projects. Um, we put this job out to bid. Um, we received four bids with uh, Hampstead Area uh, Water Services being the lowest bid of uh, one million nine hundred sixty-nine thousand six hundred seventy-four dollars. Um, it is a good bid. Um, the bids were went all the way up to almost four million dollars. Uh, so I recommend that we uh, move ahead and award this to the Hampstead um, Area Water Services. And I also recommend because this is a lot of water main part of this project, with also a well pump house. That includes $195,000 for contingencies. Any questions? Yeah, just out of curiosity, have we ever worked with this company before? We have not. Um, according to the background check that Wright Pierce did on them, they're a very good company. Uh, they put in a very good bid because they were doing a major project over in Epping. Uh -huh. So they're close by, so they were eager to get this project because they have all their equipment in this area. Okay. And I've heard they're, they're a good company to work with, but I have not worked with them. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, if you could call the roll. Councilor Aye. Councilor Pfeiffer? Aye. Councilor Glasgow? Aye. Councilor Ward? Aye. Councilor Conley? Aye. 
Motion passes 5-0. Okay. And our next resolution is um, the Tuckerwell Dredge and Fill Permit Resolution. Um, do I have a motion to approve resolution 21-22-25 Tuckerwell Dredge and Fill Permit? I'll move to um, uh, what am I right? moving to Approved. propose um, the 2021-2022-25 Tuckerwell Dredge and Fill Permit. And do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Um, any discussion or comments? <laughs> so this piece is our funding for the um, Tuckerwell is through rural development. And what we're trying to do here is put in a small access road about 150 feet to the wellhead. So we have access if we need to pull the pump or do any work to the wellhead. However, due to rural development's rules, because there's no water main going in or, or such, they, cannot, they do not allow for them to use their funds to pay for this. So we, the dredge and fill permit we've, um, from the state, they're requiring us to pay $16,678.15 to put this road in with a culvert. Um, what that money goes to, it goes to a fund so that they can improve or restore any other wetlands. So because we're doing this, we're putting money in so they can put it someplace else. The town, if the town has some wetlands they want to restore, they can put in a request for money from this fund. So it's not like it just goes away. So if the town does have something. So I'm requesting that the town, how we pay for this, is um, $7,594.75 to come out of water impact fees and $9,083.40 from water capital reserve funds for a total of $16,678.15. The reason we can use impact fees out of this is because the project is increasing our water supply. Questions? Uh, I have a question. Do we own this road now, or what, what's the story? We, we own the land. We own the land. It's just that it's wetlands, so we have to get oh, permission okay. from I the state. I thought this was the place where we had to get across the property. No, nope. this is out. This Which is. well is that, that we have to go across somebody else's? This is to? that well, but it's yeah. not that piece. It's, oh, out okay. on, it's out on our property where the well actually is. OK. And what is the story with that access road or whatever you want, you know, getting across that culvert? Getting across, what do you mean the story with it? I guess I'm just, I don't understand your question. This is the guy who wanted like a million dollars for his property, right? He wouldn't give it. Oh, so you're talking as part of this project, the new road project that we're awarding to go down his driveway to have access to our well. Yeah. That has gone through the courts, and we have possession of oh, that do. right away. Okay. Um, the only piece we have left is to go in front of the appeals board to determine the cost of it. Oh, so we, it's not fully resolved, but it's at least we know it's going to go in our favor. It, it's ours. It's yeah. already ours. It's just going to establish the price of it. Okay. Any other question or discussion? Aye. Councilor Graybeck? Aye. Councilor Aye. Blackstone? Aye. Councilor Ward? Aye. Councilor Conley? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Okay, next item is um, new business and correspondence. Do we have any um, nominations and or appointments? Okay. That's a you question. <laughs> no, <Anyway>. sorry. <laughs> Then um, the next item is resolutions and ordinances in the first reading, and we have three of those today. So the first resolution, the first reading is resolution 2122-26, um, and this is a resolution appropriating $4,000 from the Technology Capital Reserve Fund to purchase new UPS devices for the town. Whereas the town's current uninterruptible power supply and UPS devices located at the police department and at the Department of Public Works provide interim power in the event of an interruption of electric power to their respective buildings and prior to the generators starting to produce power and 
whereas the town's current UPS devices are at the end of life. One of two at DPW has ceased functioning and the one at the police department has been experiencing significant problems in recent months. And whereas the director of finance and administration is proposing to council consider replacing the noted UPS devices and network cards to significantly enhance operational continuity. And whereas the technology capital reserve fund has a balance of $24,818. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the New Market Town Council does hereby approve the expenditure of not more than $4,000 from the Technology Capital Reserve Fund for the purchase of new device, UPS devices and network cards. First reading, March 2nd, 2022. And our next resolution in the first reading is Resolution 2122-27, um, new, new Road Water Main and Drainage Improvements Project. Whereas the town has secured funding from the Community Development Block Grant, Rural Development, and the State Revolving Loan Fund for the project, and whereas um, Gritties and Sons submitted the lowest bid of $668,762 for water and $1,209,976.50 for drainage, for a total sum of $1,898,738.50 for the new road water main and drainage improvement project. And whereas the community development block grant and rural development funds will be used for the water main replacement and the state revolving funds, the ARPA funds will be used for dra the drainage portion of the project. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the New Market Town Council that the town manager is authorized to award the new road water main and drainage improvements project to Grenice and Sons for $1,898,378.50. The town council authorizes the following budget for the new road water main and drainage improvement project. For construction, $668,762 um, for, for water, and $1,209,976.50 for drainage. Contingency, $45,000 for water and $65,000 for drainage. Construction engineering, $101,200 for water and $121,200 for drainage. For totals of $834,962 for water, and $1,396,176.50 for drainage. First reading, March 2nd, 2022. And finally, um, our third resolution in the first reading this evening, resolution 2122-28, Bennett and Sewell Wells Improvement Project. Whereas the town has secured funding from rural development for the Bennett and Sewell Wells Project and Whereas Northeast Earth Mechanics submitted the lowest bid of $997,667.50 for the sewer well improvements, and whereas Underwood Engineers has uh, performed excuse me, the preliminary and final engineering and has been approved to perform the construction engineering for $178,454. Be it resolved that the town manager is authorized to award the Sewell Well construction portion of the Bennett and Sewell Wells project to Northeast Earth Mechanics for $997,667.50 and authorize the town manager to enter into an agreement with Underwood Engineers to perform the construction engineering for $178,454. The town council authorizes the following budget for the Bennett and Sewell Wells project. Construction for Sewell, $997,667.50. Contingency, $99,700. Construction engineering, $178,454. For a total of $1,275,821.50. First reading, March 2nd, 2022. Okay. Any correspondence to the town council? Okay. <laughs> and any closing comments by the town council? You could raise your hand. Yes, Councilor Craig. Um, 
I just wanted to say that um, I was a little disappointed that the planning board subcommittee could not meet to discuss, amongst other things, I believe the uh, non-attached accessory dwelling unit it was zoning ordinance that was, um, I guess, voted on a couple of months ago, I think. It's been sort of bumping around for several years. Um, and it's a little bit frustrating because if they don't do that, then nothing with zoning can change if that group can't meet. Um, so I guess this is more of a message to the people running for planning board. Um, you know, it's, there's a commitment, there's a time commitment, you know, and it's really important that you show up to these subcommittee hearing uh, meetings, and if you can't, that you do not run, you know? And if you have been on other committees that you did not show up for, you know, think about not running for a board seat that you may not have time to, to be on. Um, that said, I also think maybe some of our committees might want to consider not being town affiliated so that they didn't have to deal with the, um, the minute requirements and the um, quorum requirements. I'm talking mainly about the arts and tourism. You know, because that committee could be a town, not town affiliated, could still meet it, but there's only three people and they could probably get more done. They wouldn't have to adhere to the rules of Freedom of Information Act and that sort of stuff. I think there's probably a couple other committees that we have formed over the years that, I mean, it just seems kind of silly to keep making these committees that no one has time to be on. <laughs> and really important ones like the Planning Committee and the Budget Committee, those are like, to me, you know, really important, a lot more important, sorry, than maybe some of the others. Um, but just a thought, I mean, I think if Steve had been here, I would have asked, because there are committees like the NCDC, which has some appointed and some you know, they select some of their own members. I don't know how that exactly works, but um, it seems like we might want to consider that going forward before we create more committees that people don't have time to serve on. Thank you. Just, I, I just like to state in planning board's defense that uh, I've been in, uh, on the planning board for over two years, and this is the first time I've ever seen a meeting that didn't get a cons you know a quorum. I think for the planning board, that's a very exceptional thing. Any other closing comments by town councilors? Okay. Um, our next meeting will be is it March 16th? Yeah. Uh -huh. at, um, at 7 p.m. And if there are no other closing comments, I will consider us adjourned. Steve, I have one question for you, if I, if, if I may. The new road project yes, sir. that you brought up, do they have any idea when it's going to start? Mm, the guy you want to talk to has just left. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's in the spring. Well, they said that two years ago. <laughs> I've lived in Newmarket for 25 years. The road's been paved once. Uh, sir, if you could actually just come up to the microphone and so we can get it. So my name is Dean Adams. I've lived in Newmarket for 25 years. I've lived right on New Road. Um, they started to repave three or four years ago. Uh -huh. They got halfway down and stopped. We asked them why they stopped. Well, we're going to do road improvements. They're going to do the um, drainage, which is in dire need. It's been in dire need for over 10 years now. There's been several accidents on this end of New Road, on the New Market side of New Road, um, because of the drainage. And I just, I'd like to know, you know, have some idea when it's going to start. Um, we've all, a whole bunch of us around the neighborhood have been waiting to see when it's going to start. My suggestion uh, is come to the next meeting, and at the beginning of the meeting is the is the public comment period, and that's when you should get up and, and ask the questions. That It's the first, you know, whatever, five minutes of every meeting is public comment, and that's when we sort of hear from the public. Okay, well, I wanted to make sure that it was going to be brought up, and, you know, for this. And um, none of us know the answer to that question, unfortunately, but the public works director um, would be a good person to just call up um, tomorrow morning and see if he could give you a, a better t idea of the timeline. Okay. 
So he'll be the one doing the work. Yeah, the town manager is on vacation, and he would probably know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the chair is uh, had to leave early, so we're kind of. Uh, Skeleton yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Sorry. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Right. I appreciate your your patience with the project. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. So are we firmly adjourned then? Yeah. We actually adjourned.